biggest challenges facing working families are that they are not earning enough to be able to afford the basic necessities of life. Back in 2007, we were serving 33,000 people a month and we thought that was too many people. Now we're serving 63,000 people each month. The people who are turning to us for food assistance are struggling often, even though they're working. So they're in jobs, but the jobs don't pay enough so that they have enough income to cover their basic needs. People who are coming for food assistance are also having tremendous difficulty paying their utility bill, their heating bill. They have to make impossible choices about do they buy food or do they pay these bills that they have to pay. The Economic Progress Institute is really perceived at the State House as a voice for all Rhode Islanders. It is also perceived as a data-driven policy organization. They are collaborators, they're problem solvers, and their advocacy has resulted in significant changes in the law. In some instances, it's been to help immigrants. In other instances, it has been to preserve health benefits for children. In other instances, it has been to ensure that job training and education programs were available. I first met Nancy Gores at the State House. She was one of these very compassionate, very focused people. What Nancy Gortz was able to do in particular, working with Linda Katz, was to bring some real data-driven, policy-driven research to what heretofore had been more of a protest movement. People like EPI, they are not going to have the highly paid state house lobbyists. Therefore, they have to make their arguments based on facts and based on knowledge. They have to bring people to the state house, they have to go to the hearings, and they have to do the nitty gritty and frankly, not very glamorous work all the time. Child care is often easily the biggest uh, expense that families have in their budget. The Economic Progress Institute gathers the statistics on what's going on in our state and helps create a policy agenda to support working families in Rhode Island. They put together reports and fact sheets showing how important affordable child care is to working families. And they encourage child care providers and families to help deliver that message at the State House. They also have really been vocal on tax incentive legislation and holding our feet to the fire and ensuring, for example, that those tax incentives come with conditions that they hire meaningful employment with good wages. So when you give an example of successful advocacy of EPI, it's when your advocacy becomes the common approach that legislators take in introducing legislation. They know that there is somebody going to be watching, examining the legislation to ensure those safeguards are there. The EPI has done a great job in helping to increase access to job training, to health care, to child care. Those are the services that folks need to be able to work and make work pay. We cannot solve this problem by distributing food. We have to be able to decrease the need. We have to do more than just feed everybody in line. We have to shorten the line. That's what EPI helps us do. Their continued advocacy is so important in this building, and they should never be satisfied. They should always continue to advocate, because there will always be more that we can do.